Bismillahirrahmanirrahim and uh, Assalamu alaikum everyone. Uh, we are moving forward with corporate governance and in the last session we were talking about uh, we are talking about business and public policy and there are different type of public policies and we are now going to look at them from a more micro level and the first one that we are going to talk about is the most important one and that is the economic policy. Now ladies and gentlemen uh, definitely the economic policy of any country is very important. Uh, we see that uh, every sector uh, every society, uh, every community and every dimension uh, of life or of government or of business is related to economics and therefore the economic policy becomes uh, the most important policy in which the government has to ensure that it provides uh, a conducive and an enabling environment within the country so that uh, businesses can flourish, so that good governance and corporate governance can be, Im, can be implemented and most importantly so that all of the stakeholders can work together uh, through equity, uh, through inclusion and to mutual benefit. So that is the importance of economic policy and again the economic policy tends to make or break nations. What we have seen is that bad economic policies have adversely affected the economy of Sri Lanka and its consequences have spilled over whereby uh, a very good business community has been irreparably damaged because of bad economic policies. So that is extremely important that uh, the, the government and the business community or the corporate entities uh, get together and ensure that good economic policies are made to avoid different disasters. So what we see is that uh, ladies and gentlemen that the economic system uh, has to be adopted which then tends to uh, move towards a conducive economic policy. The policy reflects the broad objectives and also uh, the main incentives which are given by the government and it is through the economic policy that governments uh, move forward uh, and create a better environment uh, for the citizens and all of the stakeholders. Uh, in this what we see uh, is that finance is very important, the economic uh, advisory uh, bodies are extremely important and uh, more so we also see that there are other departments which are involved with the formulation of the economic policy. Uh, we see that uh, we also have a common uh, council uh, of interest, uh, the uh, common uh, Islamic ideology councils also. So there are different stakeholders which are involved in any economic policy. We also see uh, that the different institutions are extremely important. Even judiciary is very important to ensure that proper interpretation is being done in the right particular way. Uh, we see that uh, planning commission is extremely important uh, in it and then the different planning and development boards of all of the provinces, they are providing the data. The survey uh, of Pakistan or uh, the survey department uh, which tends to get all of the data together based upon which these different policies are then uh, formulated. The different trade associations like earlier talked about, the different chambers of commerce and industry, all of them become extremely important and then the individual industries themselves, uh, they are important. We, we have key players uh, like the state bank, like the uh, FBR, uh, like uh, different uh, other important departments which tend to uh, contribute towards the development of a pragmatic, uh, towards uh, a visionary and towards a realistic uh, economic policy. Uh, we also see uh, that when we are talking about uh, the, the economic policy, then there are uh, some very, very important areas which should be looked at uh, and those five fundamental objectives uh, of this particular economic policy are a faster economic growth. So what we see is that world over uh, these comparisons are being done that is the growth rate uh, 5 percent, is it 8 percent, is it 10 percent or is it 1 percent or has it gone into negative. Now extremely important that it should be on the higher end uh, of the single digit and there have been countries which have even uh, achieved uh, two digit uh, growth. Uh, so that is a very, very big Im important indicator. Uh, we also see that uh, another area is uh, the reduction of inequalities of making sure uh, that uh, income and wealth are more uh, equitably distributed and a very important aspect is to close that gap between the rich and poor, uh, that is also extremely important. Uh, then uh, providing full employment uh, which we hear all the time, 
uh, that economic policies will provide 1 million jobs, will provide 10 million jobs, will provide 50 million jobs or what is the rate of unemployment on the other hand, that is extremely important. Uh, price stability, that means inflation, inflation has to be controlled, preferably should be single digit. Uh, we unfortunately at this stage are going through uh, very high uh, in inflationary trends again post COVID, uh, the uh, Ukraine and uh, Russia war are major contributors and then again political instability within the country is creating a lot of pressure uh, from uh, what we see how the do dollar has devalued, how petrol has skyrocketed, how uh, different utility bills are skyrocketing. So, they are all affecting price stability and also uh, the amount uh, of uh, inflation which is taking place within a country and uh, very important to control that through uh, a proper economic policy. And then uh, another very important thing which we in Pakistan keep on hearing is the balance uh, of payments or its equilibrium. Uh, unfortunately, uh, our import bills are very high and our export bills are far lower, even though uh, it is uh, complemented uh, with, uh, the, with the uh, financial inflow uh, of the expatriates, which are, are sending in dollars, uh, nearly about uh, $3 billion now. That's a very big inflow uh, which is coming in. But unfortunately, because we have uh, this uh, rampant, unbridled, um, ego-inclined, uh, more a materialistic uh, consumer approach. So, what is happening is, is that our uh, import bills have become humongous. And what we see is that people in Pakistan are buying cornflakes worth 2000 rupees, are buying uh, cars and vehicles which are worth uh, 200 million rupees, uh, are buying, uh, are buying uh, these uh, decoration pieces which are worth millions of rupees. So, when the country is spending uh, its uh, uh, vital, uh, crucial, and limited foreign exchange on these type of luxuries, uh, then definitely there would be an imbalance or an inequilibrium which would lead to uh, a possible default of payments. And then we are taking extensive loaning unfortunately and through that loaning uh, we have debt payments uh, to meet, we have international commitments to meet and then we get pressurized through institutions like the IMF or the World Bank or Asian Development Bank or different international financial institutions, they tend to put a lot of pressure or the FATF. Uh, the Financial Action Task uh, Force, uh, they put in pressure in which we have seen that how we have been in the grey list for such a long time and then there were 34 postulates uh, which we had to fulfill and complete and even now uh, it is being considered and uh, we are seeing uh, that uh, we are still not taken out and brought into the white list which puts a lot of pressure and all of these things uh, are affecting uh, our economic policy one way or the other and creating difficulties for the common man creating difficulties for stakeholders and also creating difficulties for the business community. Now, all of this uh, has to be uh, done through uh, a proper dialogue, uh, through proper inclusion, through a proper participatory approach and then most important three, through the best uh, intent of ensuring that the beneficiaries are not any political party, are not a few individuals, but the citizenship at large, whereby the uh, quality of life, whereby the economic conditions of everyone tend to improve in a better way, uh, so that at least uh, they can all uh, have their basic needs and can move forward with opportunities and also the fact uh, a stronger economy uh, for Pakistan as a whole. Thank you so much.